Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of um, gender programming. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about some of the classes that are available inside the Swing package. The first class that is more commonly used in Swing package is known as JFrame. JFrame is actually a type of container, so that, I mean, that means it's, it's a container to which we can add other components to. So JFrame is a type of container, but it inherits the frame class inside the AWT package. JFrame works like the main window, where components like labels, buttons, text fields, etc. can be added to create GUI. So when we create or when we develop a GUI, we'll have to include so many buttons, text fields, radio buttons, etc. We can add all these components into a single component. So this frame act as that single component or container to which all these components can be added. Remember, frame act as a tray in our homes. JFrame has got a method named set default close operation. And this method always accepts an integer value as the parameter. By using that method, we can decide whether to hide or close the window. That is, when we click on the close button of the frame, what must happen? Whether it must be hidden or whether it has to be closed. It can be decided by means of this method. This is how we create a frame, a J frame in Swing package or Swing application. J frame frame equal new J frame. So here we are actually creating an object of class J frame. Frame is the name of the object, and we have called the constructor of J frame. It accepts one parameter. So this table illustrates the two available constructors of class J frame. One constructor does not accept any parameter, but one constructor is accepting one string content as the parameter. So when we call or when we create an object by using this constructor that does not accept any parameter, we'll be getting a frame without any heading or without any title. So if you want to generate a frame, if you want to create a frame in which there has to be a title to the frame, we have to make use of the second constructor. So in that we can mention the title that must appear on the frame as the parameter. So as in this case, when we execute the program, we'll be getting a frame and its title will be displayed. The next most commonly used class in Swing package is JLabel. JLabel is actually a component for placing text in a container. Suppose we have a frame, a JFrame. If you want to add a text to that JFrame, we can make use of this component named JLabel. But if we use JLabel component, it is actually generating a read-only text. It is actually a single line of read-only text that is created by JLabel. The text that is generated or that is created by means of JLabel component can be changed by an application, but it cannot be changed directly by the user. This table shows the different constructors that are, that are available in the JLabel class. As you can see, there are four different constructors available for JLabel class. If you use the first constructor without any parameter, we'll be getting an empty label. That is, no text will be displayed, an empty string. If we have to mention the label or content of the or the text that must be displayed on the frame, or if you want to include a label into a frame that has got a content initially, we can make use of the second constructor which accepts the string. In this case, the string that we are given, we are giving as a parameter will be displayed on the frame. In the third constructor, we can add, or we can mention the icon that must be displayed. In place of text, we can add an icon. So that, so that, that icon will be displayed on the frame when we create the label by using this constructor. If we have to use a string as well as an icon as a label, we can make use of the fourth constructor as it accepts three parameters. They are, one is the text that must be displayed, second is the icon that must be displayed and the alignment. How must this label will be aligned, aligned, whether it has to be aligned horizontally or vertically. You can see one example here, in the first line we are creating a frame object, J frame, F is equal to new J frame, so we will be getting a frame with this title, label example with the title of the frame. 
then we are creating two reference variables of class j label l1 and l2 at this step we are creating one object of class j label and we have mentioned we have used a second constructor which access one string content as the parameter so here the first label is the string content so name of the name that will be displayed on the frame when we add l1 to the frame will be first label we have mentioned the size the length width and the location of the label so set bounds method is used to do that so it has got four parameters the first two parameter indicates the location at which l1 must appear on the frame and how much length and width must be there for that label similarly we created the second label l2 we have mentioned the label text as second label and we have added that to the we have, we have mentioned the bounds where must this label appear and the length and width of that label too then we have added both those labels to the frame by calling the method add so here f is a frame is a container it it is to this container we have to add the label so we have to call f dot add l1 so this will add l1 to f similarly f dot add l2 this will add label 2 that is l2 to the, to the frame f next component is j button it is used to create a labeled button and this button that we create by using j button class has got a platform independent implementation and when we press the button an action will be generated some of the constructors of this j button class are as follows the first constructor does not accept any parameter so in that case we will be getting a, sim a button without any content there will not be any label for that button second constructor is act accepting a string content or str string s as the parameter that means if we create an object by using the second constructor we have to pass a string value as the parameter and that value will be displayed on the button when it is added to the frame or the or any other container the third constructor is accepting an icon as the parameter so that means instead of any text if you want to represent a button by using an image then we can use this third constructor these lines of code indicates how to create frame and how to how to create buttons as well as how to add a button to the frame the first line creates a frame named f the title is mentioned as button example then we created a button named b by using the second constructor of class j button we have given one content one text as the parameter so click here will be the text will be the label of the button that will be displayed on the frame we have mentioned the bounds of the button where this button must appear and how much length and width must be there for this button and finally we added that button to the frame by calling the add method here f is the frame b is the button f dot add b means we are adding button b to the frame the next component is j text field j text field is used to accept a single line of text from the user that means it is a text component which allows editing of a single line text and j text field class inherits the j text component class some of the constructors of j text field class are as follows there are four constructors the first constructor is an empty i mean its parameter list is empty so if we create a j text field by using the first constructor we will be getting a text field of default size if we want to create a, a text field in which there has to be some content initially that is very often we see some forms in which certain text field text field will have certain contents initially say first name displayed in a fade, faded color that is the initial text so when the form comes up already the text field will contain a certain text so if you want to generate or create a text field like that that means when the form comes up or when the form is displayed for the first time if the text field has to contain some certain value initially we can make use of the second constructor so when we call or when we create a j text field object by using second constructor the text that we are passing as parameter will be displayed initially the third constructor is used it's a combination of the second constructor and if you want to 
indicate initially how long the text field must be. Suppose the, te the text field that we create must contain a certain text and at the same time it must be say 100 characters long then we can make use of the third constructor. In that case the text that we are passing as parameter will be displayed initially and at the same time the text field length the length of the text field that is going to appear on the frame will be the number the integer value that we have displayed that we have given as a parameter to the constructor and if we want to create a text field in which there is no need of any initial text but the initial length when the text field appears on the screen if the length of the text field if you want to mention that if we have to create a text field that is 100 characters long or 100 that is capable of uh, handling that is capable of holding 100 characters at a time we can use the fourth constructor in the fourth constructor we are giving one integer value as the parameter so when we use that constructor to create a j text field object we will be getting a text field which is that much long I hope that is clear these lines of course show, shows how to create a text field how to add it to a frame we have created a frame named f and we have mentioned the title as j uh, text field example we have created two text field reference variables named t1 and t2 then now we, we are creating an object of uh, j text field class and we have used the second constructor of the j text field so when we add when we add this text field t1 to the frame and the, when the frame is displayed this content will be displayed in that text field initially then we have mentioned the uh, set well, the size the location and the size of the text field we have mentioned that t1 must be at uh, xy coordinate of 50 100 and it must have a length of 200 and height of 30 then similarly we have displayed we have created text field object t2 we have mentioned the uh, content to be displayed initially so when this text field will appear on the screen initially its content will be awt tutorial and its size and position also it's mentioned here by using the set bounds method as we did for t1 and finally we added t1 and t2 to the frame f here f is a frame so f dot add t1 means we are adding t1 to f similarly f dot add t2 means we are adding t2 to f okay so when these two text fields appear on the frame initially this content welcome to java t point will be displayed in t1 and awt tutorial will be displayed in t2 but when the user click in that text box that content will be uh, we can remove that content and we can add new content as per the user's wish i hope we shall conclude now in this video lecture we have discussed about some of the most commonly used components in swing package which are the classes for those components and constructors of those classes we have seen some of the examples of creating button text field and how to add it to a frame etc that is all in this video lecture thank you so much